In this Camtasia tutorial, I'd like us to talk about how you can use Casa effects inside Camtasia effectively to draw people's attention and pass your message across, especially if you do video tutorials like I do. Hi, my name is David, and if this is your first time checking out my video tutorials and you're getting value from this content, kindly consider subscribing. If you have any question, kindly feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Let's get into today's video. So today's video is just about Casa effects and Casa effects in Camtasia work when you're working with the recording, that is the T-Rec file. For example, I have a T-Rec file in the my media bin and in the timeline here. So if you have a video that has a Casa effects, it will not work. But if it's the recording, a Camtasia recording that is a T-Rec file, then the, the Casa effects will work as advertised. So if you cannot see them here, You'll need to click on the more tab and you'll find them just located underneath animations or just somewhere below here, depending on how your effects are oriented. And we can click on this. Now, the reason why you may need to use Casa effects is that Casa effects can help magnify your message and enhance the message while drawing attention to your users to what you're doing. We have the first few cursor effects here and we have the highlight and the highlight is where the cursor has a color surrounding it. So it draws people's attention to see where the cursor is. We also have the cursor magnify and this helps to magnify a particular section that maybe you're clicking or that you want your audience to see uh, in clarity. We also have the spotlight. The spotlight tends to dial out everything else but only where the cursor is is there a spotlight? And then we have Casa Smoothing. Casa Smoothing is used especially when you're working with two sections where you did a couple of uh, rapid movements of your mouse uh, or your cursor and uh, you want to make that movement smooth. And as you can see here, there are two options. The left is where there is no Casa Smoothing, the right is where there's Casa Smoothing. So you can use this if you had jumpy areas, but one of the ways that you can help yourself is that always try to be static and always to the side if possible when you're not uh, talking about a particular thing on screen so that your cursor doesn't interfere with the shot that you're looking at. The next tab is uh, the left click uh, button and this has the, the rings. When somebody clicks, you see the rings or the ripples or the scope. You can also have sound and if you scroll down slightly, you'll also have a target and a link, uh, a left click warp. And uh, that applies also for the right click, you get rings, uh, you get a ripple, uh, we get uh, a scope, uh, the sound. And then if we scroll down again, you get the target and the warp. Now, the most important ones for me that I use and my favorites are the cursor highlight. And also we have uh, the rings so that when I click on something, somebody sees what I've clicked on. And finally, uh, the sound. And this applies also for the right click. I like to use the rings and the sound. So what happens here, for example, in our footage below, what I'd normally do is that, and, and my recommendation is that before you start making edits to your recording, that is your screen recording down here, ensure that you add the Casa effects first. And the reason for this is that if you add the Casa effects when you've already made a bunch of cuts, for example, if I just do some few dummy cuts, you'll notice that I already have three clips on my timeline. If I was going to be adding uh, this highlight or this cursor effect, I've added it only to the first clip. This means that all my other clips will not have the cursor effect unless I do it manually. Now to keep everything uniform, it's best if you can just add the cursor effects before you start making your chops or your edits so that you keep everything as uniform as possible. Also, when you add animations before adding the cursor effects, especially zoom ins and zoom outs, what happens is that the cursor always defaults to the default size. And it's a lot of work, especially when you have to zoom in and out of different sections of the canvas to readjust the cursor effects to match what you're looking for or your desired output. So we can just undo the edits we've made here undo the effect, undo the cut, undo the cut. So we first of all drop our cursor highlight and once we drop it in there, it's going to be added to the whole clip. And when you look to your right, 
you'll notice that uh, there is the, the video, there is the audio, and then there is the cursor properties. You need to know that these are the properties of the cursor that you have here. So it's scaled at 100% opacity, and you can see where it is on the canvas. It is right at the middle. So what you can do with this is that you can work on a couple of things here, and I love changing the color from yellow to green. So I do a green one, and then I drop down the size to about, give or take, 15. Now that's good for me. It's visible, and if I click on the media again, you'll notice that it comes back on. You can also scroll back up and scale the mouse itself. So as you can see, the mouse is becoming bigger. That's another way you can enhance and draw people's attention, but this is just too big. So I'll just reset it uh, to 100%, that is the normal size, and then just have this, the cursor highlight as a light green. So once I do that, I just leave everything as it is. You can also apply ease in and ease out. These are all more or less like fade-ins and fade-outs, but I just like to leave everything as it is uh, because that's how I use it. Now the next effect I can add here is the left click and I can just drop uh, the rings, just drop them in there. Once I drop them in there, you can already see uh, from our footage that I clicked on this, and that is why uh, we have a red dot. So what you can do, we can probably also play with the size slightly and give it a 15%. I don't want it to be too big so that it interferes with the message you're trying to pass across. So that's probably what I like to do, and if you'd like to change the color, you can still do that what suits your needs. So basically that is what you do for the left click and if you'd like to have some sound you can also drag and drop that in here. So it's already been added again and you can see uh, the left click sound should be a mouse click but you can also select a laptop click and also you can just adjust the volume or crank it up so that people can listen to the sound and know well that was a right click, that was a left click and so on and so forth. You can always uh, preview the sound here and also crank it up uh, if you need it to be more audible. So for this, what I'd like to say is that before you start working on your recordings, always ensure that you add your Camtasia Casa effects before you do uh, the edits so that you keep everything uniform. If I made an edit here, let's say a cut right here, I just pressed S to make that cut and I have two clips. When you look at uh, the properties of this first clip, uh, that is the cursor, if you look at them, you'll notice that they're identical to the second clip. Uh, if we just look at it, they're just identical. But if you had made this cut before adding the cursor effects, you'll need to copy the cursor properties you've used in the first clip to the second one. And sometimes it takes a lot of time. You can just undo the cut. So we can just remain with our footage like that. So that's basically how you use Casa Effects to draw and enhance your screen recordings and your tutorials when you use Camtasia. I hope that this video is going to help somebody out there know how to use the Casa Effects effectively. And please remember, just be minimalistic in what you do. Make sure that even when you're using them, for example, if I can just uh, draw this uh, down a little bit, you can notice that my cursor movements, especially here, the cursor is right here. If we move again, you'll notice that it's not overly on screen. But if I decided to just go ballistic and just send it to almost something like 168 or even 100, let's say 102, this is too big of a cursor effect. So I always go with something like 15 or even 20, but 15 serves the purpose, especially when you intertwine Casa effects and zoom effects inside Camtasia. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use zoom effects, uh, and there are a couple of ways you can use them, and also some few nifty tricks that can help you enhance your Camtasia recording. Thank you for watching this video. Kindly subscribe if you like what you see, and I hope that you got value from this video. Thank you for watching.